Imagine this, you've got a single engine fighter with two crew, you've got four guns, but they're all clustered in a turret at the back, and you're going to be sent up to face the German Luftwaffe over southern England. Sounds crazy, right? Well, it happened. The plane was the Bolton Pool Defiant, FX Maker Kit in 172nd. I'm going to show you what you get for your money in the box. Find out more right here on Gary's Stuff. Hello there, welcome to my channel, welcome back if you've been here before. Today indeed is box opening day on Kit of the Week. That kit being the 172nd scale Bolton Pool Defiance from Airfix. Now if you've got one of these already, want to know how to put it together, look out for the build video coming later this week. If you are thinking of getting one or you've got one in order, just want to know what you get inside the box of your money, this is very much the video for you. Now, if you'd like to make sure you don't miss the build video, the best thing you can do is to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell if you haven't done so yet. That way you get notified of all my future content and it's published. And of course, anything you like on my channel, please do remember to give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. And if you'd like to offer a bit more concrete support to the channel, you can do that through Super Thanks by becoming a channel member or by using any of my online affiliate programs. Now, one of these is the Airfix program. What happens is if you click on the link in the information box below here, go to the Airfix online store, buy anything at all there, no matter what it is, this Defiant or anything else, then at no extra cost to you, Airfix will make a donation to the running of this channel. And you can still get your Airfix club discount if you're a member. And of course, you can still collect your hobby reward points as well this kit incidentally was donated to the channel by joe olmo so joe thank you very much mate this one's for you let's uh, get on then and have a look at what you get inside the box of the airfix 172nd scale bolton paul defiant here we have the box of the bolton paul defiant mark one let's have a look and see what we get inside so Big plastic bag with one, two, three, three, I think gray sprues or form frames and a transparent frame. We have the instructions and normally inside the instructions somewhere, yep, we have the decals. And also in here we have a sheet of the stencil positions as well. And we'll have a look at all these bits in a bit more detail. At this point, Airfix are calling these things sprues, apparently, because it says sprue A. They now call them frames. So sprue A, according to them, um, is the fuselage, the pilot and gunner, propeller, undercarriage, the, um, covers, doors, um, exhausts, two different types of exhaust, probably day or night, I don't know, wheels, prop spinners, um, guns, and the gun turret as well, uh, main gear legs there. Frame B are the top parts of both wings, the gear bay, um, rudder, tailplanes, closed doors, uh, this is the uh, back decking, for the fuselage and um, bits of the cockpit as well, I guess. Frame C, or sprue C, as they would have it, is the bottom segment of the wing, one piece. Um, parts of the undercarriage, tailplane, other bits and pieces, doors and things like that on the inside. If we have a look at the plastic, it's um, very much of its age. Uh, I don't know when this, I can't remember when this was actually designed. I should know these things. I should look these things up. 2015. 2015. So this is that actually quite nice plastic. The um, blue green, also blue gray. This is from the 2015 mold 
So the plastic, when we look up close, is that nice sort of slightly greyish, pale bluish plastic that actually molds really nicely if the molds are good. Um, this one looks like it's had a bit of use. It looks just that tiny bit soft compared to most I've seen of this plastic. However, you know, when you look at the pilot figures and, and the pilot and the observer gunner figures, they're actually pretty good. I mean, you can see the tie on the pilot. This is at 172nd. So that's pretty, pretty good, I would say. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, generally speaking, the parts are clean enough. There's a little bit of flash here and there, just sort of creeping in at the edges. Maybe these molds are getting just a little bit tired now. A little bit bits of flash here and there on the pilot figures. We'll have a look at the other frames and see what they're like as well. This is from frame C, uh, lower wing, and you can see there are bits of flash here and there on it. Um, that's not great, but not terrible. I mean, that'll take like a few seconds to get rid of that. But it means there's fairly likely to be no undershoots of any of the parts. The, the mouldings are, are fine. The mouldings are OK. They're, they're quite heavy with the panel lines. But um, I don't know. I, th I think they'll be OK. The, a lot of FITS kits of, of this period were very heavy with panel lines. Um, that flash issue sometimes, like on these undercarriage components, are a bit prominent. But we can get rid of that. We can get rid of those. No problem. Again, there's some, some issues around around the ends of these parts here, but nothing that we can't actually deal with. The instruction sheet, very typically airfix. Um, history of the aircraft in several languages, but basic specifications. Um, assembly instructions here, just very generalized instructions. Some translation of the um, icons that are used here. And then the instructions themselves. Uh, you, if you've made an FX kit before, you'd be very familiar with the style. Um, shaded, uh, looking from an angle. Yeah, they look they look fine. There's bits on the, on these ones. It's maybe a little unusual. It's, it shows a, a slightly more modern approach. Is actually to put in some colour on some of these paint callouts as well. Normally you don't see that, but yeah, there they are. All very straightforward, all very easy, it appears at least. Um, there are the, there's lots of, there's lots and lots of options on here. Um, different exhaust stacks. Uh, whether you've, if you've got the gear down, then you have to have this aerial raised because it won't actually sit there properly. Otherwise it'll break the aerial. Uh, and the options for the, uh, canopy and windscreen. I'm doing this one with the pilot's canopy open, as I mentioned before. And then the schemes. This is the A scheme, aircraft of number 264, squadron at Marskel Heath in 1940. So very Battle of Britain. Very nice standard early war um, daytime scheme. So dark earth, uh, dark green, and sky undersized, they use matte beige green. Kind of surprised that Airfix or Humbro haven't actually done a proper thing that they can call sky when it says approximately sky. But then, yeah, colors are strange things. And then the other scheme, scheme B is an aircraft of 151 squadron in February 1941, RF Wittering. And this is the night fighter all over black scheme with the uh, shark's mouth logos on it as well, which is kind of tempting. I don't and uh, kind of tempted to do an all over black aircraft like this again. Um, yeah, I'm very tempted to do that actually because I can have a go at the, the black um, highlighting. Then there's a layout sheet of the common stencil data. Now, normally, um, the day fighter would have a lot of the stencils in black and the night fighter would have them in red. But on the uh, Defiant 
most of the stencils are actually in red, so they suit both aircraft, so it doesn't really matter which one you do. There are a few stencils, mainly like the radio stencils and things like that, that are different, but otherwise most of the stencils here are for both schemes. As you can see, there's not a vast number of them, which is kind of nice. Last but not least is the decal sheet. Um, neither aircraft has an underwing decal, which is interesting enough. Anyway, common stencils, as I say here, common markings are the cockpit face and the upper wing roundels are common. Um, the rest are specific to the aircraft. So 151 Squadron, the night fighter, has the markings in red, the shark's tooth uh, motif as well, and the larger yellow outer ring. The day motif um, for 264 Squadron, interesting that that blue is quite pale, though they do say that the pale appears quite blue. That's almost like a, a 1930s RAF blue. Um, I've seen fleet air arm aircraft with that color before, almost a French blue actually, um, but obviously the colors would be the other way around if it was French. And the markings here are in uh, gray and in black for the registration serial number. As usual, here's my half millimeter pencil. The, uh, the lead in, in there is half a millimeter wide. You can see these are what about 0.3 millimeters tall can be read nicely the instruction sorry the instruments panel it's quite nice little sort of highlights of color where needed as usual very crisp nice color very obviously cartograph that's it then um, all looks very good all looks very simple do come back and see how i make it how you know when that video is released well best thing to do subscribe to the channel hit the bell and you'll be notified of all my future content as it is released. And of course, anything you see on my channel, please do enjoy. There it is then. Um, it looks a very straightforward kit. I'm looking forward to making it. How you know when the build video is around? Well, best thing to do, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell and you are notified when any content of mine is published and of course, Anything you see on my channel, if you like it, please do give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. Hope you enjoyed the show. Hope you can come back again soon to check out more of the content. Take very good care and I'll see you soon. Bye bye now.